today I'm going to introduce the uh, concept of a stock and flow uh, diagram, which is, uh, which is new to this video series. And let me just put it in context and then we'll deep dive into the stock and flow uh, diagram. There are really four big tools in system dynamics. The first is the one we spent almost all of our time on, the causal loop uh, diagram. And what I wanted to do is just take you through the four tools using an example that you would know intuitively, so you don't need to focus on the, the example itself, but more of the tool. So the example is a virtuous cycle of bank account savings. So you put your money uh, in a bank account, that generates interest. That interest is put back into the bank account, and because now your balance is bigger, it generates even more interest, which puts back, which generates even more interest, and so your savings kind of builds up uh, like a snowball rolling down the hill. So that's a positive reinforcing uh, cycle. So that's a, virtu a virtuous cycle. So savings drives interest, interest drives more savings, more savings drives more interest, more interest drives more savings. So we covered this. Uh, the second tool is the behavior over time graph. And uh, in this particular tool, we haven't covered too much, but it's not too difficult to understand. Um, basically, what you do is you graph the key variables, I only pick one savings, over time. And it's really the shape, it's the reason it's called behavior over time, and the y-axis is kind of unlabeled, it's really the shape that matters. And this shape is exponential growth, which is, which all virtuous cycles really are, is an exponential growth cycle. So, um, you know, if you have $100, 10% interest, you get $10 in interest, that makes it $110 balance, now you get $11 in interest next year, makes it $121 balance, now you get $12 in interest. So it's basically growing more and more over time, which is the shape of a virtuous cycle. So that's tool number two. Tool number three is stock and flow diagram. And uh, this I'll talk about much more uh, uh, in a few, uh, few minutes. Uh, but it basically, it's the leading, uh, what you need to do next to build it into a model um, in Excel. And so the last tool is really modeling it in Excel, and there are some more advanced tools for system dynamics. So the magic of system dynamics is really the top left and the bottom right from my point of view. So the top left is basically what we covered, a different way to think about the world, understanding feedback loops, understanding delays, understanding sort of uh, unintended consequences of your actions, changing the model, that sort of thing that, that we've been covering. And then the other uh, magic is really modeling it out so you can try out different policy changes, try out different strategies, different structures to see what has the best behavior. So stock and flow diagram is really a, a means to getting to here. So you need to think about your causal loop diagram in a more slightly formal form, and then once you do that, it translates easily into Excel. So, um, so now we'll dive into, in this case, how, what a stock and flow diagram is and how you do it in this particular savings interest example. Okay, a good place to start is to take a look at the causal loop diagram and imagine converting this into Excel, what the formulas would be, and we'll notice a few problems uh, with that process, which would lead you into a different kind of uh, diagram. So uh, let's start with interest. So imagine typing in a cell, uh, the formula for interest. And that formula would be interest equals savings times interest rate, right? Okay, so we notice that our diagram is a missing interest rate. So that's not a big deal. We'll add interest rate here. So interest is really dependent on two variables, savings and interest rate. We're all set here. Now let's think about this variable. So you have savings, and that's based on interest. Uh, okay. So it's interest plus what? It's plus savings. So you have savings, and then you add interest to it. So if you were to type that into Excel, you can't really do it that way because you can't, can't have a cell refer to itself uh, in any way. It's a circular reference. So essentially savings is, it's kind of like your last year's savings 
or your prior month savings or prior year or prior day or however you're going to calculate it, plus your new interest is your new savings. So this is a variable that kind of, it, it builds up, it accumulates um, over time. And it's not an instantaneous uh, calculation, it's one that um, builds up over time. And all causal loops will have one variable that's like this, at least one variable that's like this, and it's called a stock. And a stock is really an accumulation of events over time. So um, examples, I put some examples over here, but things that you can count that kind of stack up, like number of customers, number of employees, number of bugs in a software product, dollars of accumulated savings, number of products that you're building, or number of projects that are in progress, or even soft concepts like brand equity builds up over time. It might build, it might drain over time, but it doesn't change instantaneously based on, on something else. So it's something that kind of stocks up, it's what it's called. So again, every loop will have one, a variable just like this or you won't be able to uh, model it. So let me describe how to draw that. We draw stocks in boxes. So there's uh, your savings balance, and then there the way that changes is there's a f inflow and an outflow. At least as a typical stock will have an inflow and an outflow. In terms of what comes into your savings, what makes it get bigger, it's interest in this example. So interest is the only inflow into the stock. Uh, there was an initial maybe uh, savings put in a long time ago, but for this model it's really interest that's the only thing that's been added since. And then in this case we don't have any outflow. So we're not doing any withdrawals from the stock. And this picture is actually a valve, so the interest is kind of the amount that's flowing, uh, flowing in. So now, um, now let's just rethink it. So interest is based on the savings balance and based on the interest rate. And savings is really just based on it accumulating interest over time. So it had a beginning balance, and then since then it's just been the interest under this formula that has increased the savings. So that's basically it. So this is a simple stock and flow diagram. This is the stock, this is the inflow. Um, the formula is, I'll show you how to convert this into Excel in the next video, but once you do a stock and flow diagram with all the variables, this easily can get converted into an actual model. And once it's in the model, you can sort of play with interest rates and beginning balances and, and other sorts of things you might, other sorts of strategies or policies you might do to change your, your model. This is a very easy case, but um, it's really building the stock and flow model will lead the lead you into modeling it in Excel a lot uh, a lot easier. Okay? Thanks.